this episode, we're going to be continuing to talk about the new features that are upcoming in Rails 6.0's release. This episode, we're going to be talking about specifically the Rails DB system change command, which will take your Rails application and change the database.yaml file for you. So if you decided to switch from, you know, MySQL to Postgres, you don't have to go and do all that manual work to try and find the database.yaml config for Postgres and copy that over. You can actually use this command to do that stuff for you. So if you run Rails new, SQLite app, something like this, and you generate an app with SQLite, once this is done, you can go into that directory and run the new command for that and give it your database. And it will go ahead and change your application accordingly so that it will be set up with that new database. And this is something that we had to do manually in the past. I've done it many, many times and had to go look that up and kind of Google for the template um, or even just create a new Rails app to get the database.yaml template for uh, Postgres or whatever I was switching to. So this command is going to help us do that automatically and modify our Rails app for us. So if we open up our SQLite app, we'll see that in our gem file, we have SQLite listed here and our database.yaml file um, has a bunch of SQLite content in it. So if we wanted to convert this SQLite application over to Postgres, for example, we can run Rails DB colon system colon change to PostgreSQL, and that will go ahead and change our application over. You'll see right here that it's gonna modify our database.yaml. We can say, yes, we want to accept that, and it's going to gsub out our gem file lines as well. So if we load this up, um, in our editor, you'll see that we now have the database.yaml from the Postgres template, and that is all set up for us. And you'll see that we also have these two new lines um, as a replacement for SQLite in our gem file. So it's super duper simple. And then of course to install the gem, the PG gem for Postgres, we would run bundle, but this is going to fail and it's kind of surprising as you might first notice. But what it's done is it's actually replaced the SQLite reference in your gem file with PG, the correct gem for Postgres. However, it left the version numbers um, intact. And so that is one thing that maybe will get fixed in the future, but you might need to remove any version numbers that you have in your gem file. And that's the only kind of adjustment you might need to make to have that transition for you. Then you can run bundle and install the PG gem and you are good to go. You can now create your database, run your migrations and do all that stuff using your new database. So this is a super simple little addition to Rails 6, but a very, very handy one in something that um, I'll probably probably use several times in the future just whenever I accidentally create an app with the wrong database. So that is it for this episode and we'll talk more about some of the other new features in Rails 6 in the next episodes.